Hello Cornerstone Community Church family and parents from all over the world. I'm going to be sharing on parenting with purpose during this COVID-19 lockdown. I have some thoughts I believe will bless you and strengthen your families and help you with your parenting during this time. God is good, he's faithful, and He is there for us every single day. So my thoughts um, are going to flow to you and I'm sure that God is showing you ways to um, harness this time on purpose as we focus on our children because it's all going to change again very soon once they go back to school and I hear parents saying yay and I also hear parents saying oh this has been a very special time challenging but very special so let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every parent that's watching. Lord, I thank you that you, Father God, love every family and you have strategies by your spirit to help each and every one. So Lord, we commit this time to you. We give you all the glory and we ask for wisdom and you give it liberally in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so parenting we know is child rearing, nurturing, and it's educating also. We are training the children in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And we're looking at spiritual parenting, especially today in our time together. And our spiritual par parenting is making disciples and followers of Jesus, right? And um, Children that are hungering and passionate for the word of God children that want to grow in Jesus, children that are devoted to God and true believers. I hope you don't mind, I'm just looking down at my screen at different times so I can look at my notes and stay on track, okay? So parenting is a high call. Philippians 3.14 in the New King James says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This life of parenting is a call from God. It's vital, vital for our uh, descendants to come. We are producing faith on the earth as we bring our children up in the ways and the admonition of the Lord. So parenting is a challenge, not just in this time, but for a lifetime. I'm still parenting, my daughter's 40 years of age and I'm grandparenting and I'm still learning from the Lord how to bless my family, how to bring his presence in to situations that I'm invited into, right? So as a grandparent, I'm getting invited into the atmosphere. As a parent, I am leading with my husband the atmosphere for our children to grow in the Lord. So this time is unprecedented. It's uncertain in the natural. The world system puts fear and uncertainty in the minds of people. And as children growing in the house of God, in your home, we are placing in them faith with God, but with God, it's grace-filled. Our parenting is grace-filled, faith-filled, dependent on God more than ever. It's bringing us back to that total dependence and a spirit-led life of parenting and living for Jesus Christ. And it's moment by moment. We don't have all the answers for tomorrow, but God gives us the answers for our homes and our children because he designed them so individually, so wonderfully. And purpose means creating an atmosphere of security. So that's my number one point, that we are to create an atmosphere of security. And that will help our children during this uncertain time in the world. Psalm 91, I'm sure everybody's been in Psalm 91 um, in these days. But I want to focus on four verses, verses one to four. Those who live, and this is the the New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will secure you from every trap 
He'll rescue you, sorry, from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Isn't that wonderful? And the whole psalm is a glorious psalm of protection for those who come under the shadow, come under the shelter of the Most High God. So that's my first thought. So to come under the shelter, I have a picture of an umbrella and um, gathering under that umbrella. You could even gather your children on a daily basis under an umbrella to literally give them a picture of what it's like to be under God and protected from, you know, the umbrella is naturally to protect us from the sun if it's too hot and the rain when it's wet. But God's saying, I'll be your protection. So acknowledging him and his dominion in your home is a powerful a spoken declaration for the children to hear God you are number one in our home you rule and reign in our home and you help us and so to gather your children together under an umbrella and as you put him first in your day as you acknowledge him he comes in we know that he's always with us but acknowledgement of God the Father Son and Holy Spirit brings his presence into our home and the children need to hear you every day declare God this is your home we are your family you are our father to hear the children um, to hear uh, dad say that God you are my father powerful powerful relationship connection so come under the umbrella of the shelter of God. I even had a picture of um, perhaps the children making strings and, and little declaration cards with scriptures on them, even this Psalm 91, and putting them all on the edge of the umbrella all around so you can twirl the word of God and they can choose one to say with you together for the day. Just a little activity thought, um, creativity in the homes. So that's under the shelter of the Most High. The next verse, uh, the, mo the next verse says, find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Finding the rest of God doesn't mean we sleep all day. It means still being active, still being uh, fruitful, still being busy with the things of home life and all that entails and our schoolwork but it's resting in him, having an inner peace that only he can bring. And parents, it starts with you. It starts with you taking your rest in God. So here's a thought. Stop worrying. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can bring your thoughts into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. And you can live in that realm of carefree, as in, I'm not going to take the cares of this world. We come to Jesus with prayer and supplication and he gives our mind rest and peace. So calming your thoughts, helping the children to calm their thoughts by asking them, what are you thinking? What's your biggest challenge at the moment? What are you worried about? Let's take it to Jesus together. And even to the point of sharing your concerns, not the big ones that children don't need to know about, but the ones that are going to help them along their journey of faith. And pray shalom. That Hebrew word is so weighty. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom in our home. Find rest. So I have got an idea, and this is what I do with children and myself, um, mostly on a daily basis, is to find my quiet time and to put on worship music or instrumental soaking music and just breathe and trust God. God, I trust you. A mantra, a meditation. I trust you with my whole life. Oh God, I find rest in you. You are almighty God. And have your children repeat those words in an atmosphere of rest and peace. Beginning of the day if possible and definitely at the end of the day. We put our trust in you. And even stopping in the middle of the day. Children, stop what you're doing. Let's say this. Father, I put my trust in you. Father, I put my trust in you. 
Oh, I tell you, I feel the presence of God right now. He's so beautiful. Verse 2 says about daily, well, declaring, declaring. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. Again, declaring is speaking out with your children. It will help them in the years to come that they'll beginning not just thinking about how good God is, but declaring, God, you are so good to us as a family. Oh, God, you are leading us and guiding us through this difficult time. It's not burying the facts. It's not pushing aside what's going on, but it is coming into the language of faith. The language of faith, parents, is not worry or grumbling or complaining. The language of faith is love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness. So you might want to write out, I trust you, Lord, over and make it a banner over your doorway or on the mirrors or on the fridge, places where the children frequent. And you might want to even make up a little song or a rap. He alone is my refuge. Anyway, maybe the children can do that and they can teach it to you. You could give them a challenge, a rap faith challenge. He's my refuge. He's my shelter. My God in him, I trust. So verse 3 says, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Oh my goodness, here we are. We're facing a disease that has taken lives and can be deadly for the vulnerable in our communities. Um, but this scripture and this psalm is for the rest of our lives, that we can live in the presence of God with the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb that has been spilt and shed for our victory. And so living in the victory, living in the victory, the blood of Jesus still speaks victory for our lives. The blood of Jesus is powerful today, <clears throat> just as powerful as it was when he shed it for us on the cross. So we speak, we speak to fear and speaking to symptoms and it works for any ailment, any sickness, any disease. By his stripes we were healed. In the next video series we're going to talk about taking communion and the power of that and the blood of the lamb. So as we have the victory children will, will uh, take assurance and take strength and security from who God is and who he has revealed himself to us. Verse 4 says, he will cover you. He will cover you with his feathers, with his wings. I know it's an interesting picture of God with wings and feathers. Um, but he also says to remember his promises. And the promises of God are yes and amen. So we make sure that the promises of God can flow in our homes because we're a home that loves and forgives. I think doing a study together as a family on 1 Corinthians 13, the love confession from verse 4 on, love is patient and kind. And, and as, as you talk about that and ask the children, are we doing well with this or do we need some help in some areas? God, love is not irritable. Okay, let's work on that one because we've been struggling with that, with sibling rivalry and all the things that go with family challenges. But God, but God, but God is in the middle. So make sure forgiveness is flowing in your house. Make sure that you stop the children if they're narky with each other. That means, you know, just using words of death, not life. Let's stop. What did you just say? How can we just um, make apologies and ask your sibling, ask your brother, your sister uh, to forgive you? Say sorry and um, make sure that love is flowing in your home. Be an example of the God kind of love between you and your wife, you and your husband and uh, let the children hear you apologize to one another and seek forgiveness from one another because vulnerability 
is powerful. It's not weakness, it's meekness. It's called humility. And every marriage needs help. And the children know it. <laughs> they know it. So being vulnerable in front of them and say, oh, look, I'm so sorry. I missed it. Daddy, forgive me. Mummy, forgive me. Whoever. Be the first to say I'm sorry, even if you're in the right. That's powerful. That's, let the children hear you say it when you've missed it. And it will build not um, disrespect. It will build build honor in them that they can see that you're trusting God as much as they need to trust God. So I've got an idea that you could make a family promise from God book. The children could sit around with you and you could let them know the promises that are in your heart for the family and make it into a book and draw pictures by faith for your future and the hope that you found in Jesus and help the children find their scriptures too. So that's the spiritual side of things. Now, the practical side of lockdown um, is finding a routine while the children aren't going to school and they're homeschooling. Oh my goodness, especially little ones, growing them up in a routine. But even my 15-year-old grandson said to me, Nanny, I'm, I'm really missing my routine. And so the family have worked out for each child uh, a schedule, a daily schedule. You only need to do it once and you can tweak it um, with them as uh, things change. But uh, my friend, uh, she's a mother of three and she did a schedule that she runs for her family and uh, I just think it's amazing. But routines practically can help children understand, understand time and time management. Routines can help children get used to having chores Routines can establish important habits such as brushing their teeth and doing their hair. We know that that's a daily routine that you've built into your family, but there are other things that you might want to do during this time. Routines can strengthen relationships by focusing on time together. What's working for the family? It's not just about you. It's about us living together in these extraordinary circumstances and working out a schedule that's going to be great for us as a family. Routines are important because they influence a child's emotional and cognitive and social development. They help children feel secure. They help children understand expectations. So here's a little run through of my friend's day. Um, and uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. So some of these thoughts might help you in your scheduling and maybe there's things you haven't thought of. Like they, when the children wake up, they're ex and the time frames are up to you, okay? So you know your household. And um, I've just got it here and I think it's mirrored though. I don't think you can see it. It's back to front for you. I'm sorry about that. But I might put it up on... Um, our website, theclancys.com.au. I'll put the slides up as well. Uh, so, wake up. Ah, wake up. Read your Bible before you jump out of bed, children. Have your Bible time, whether that's three minutes or ten minutes, depending on the age of the child. But we're going to have a house meeting at such and such a time. Be at the table, and at the table you can talk about the day's routine and have a prayer together, committing the day, acknowledging God as the center of your home. Then breakfast, I mean, this is subject to your change. Uh, breakfast, get dressed, teeth, make beds, tidy room, and then some morning play. Then it's school time. So whatever time you want to start the school day, creative play after school time, Lego, craft, art, some coloring in time. Music time, dance time, exercise time, praise, praise time, um, singing and dancing and listening to music. Then morning tea, a great healthy morning tea time. Back to schoolwork, exercise time just before lunch, lunch time, some screen time, reading time, set the table for dinner time, other jobs around the house time. Indoor play, outdoor walk, if you're able to do that. Exercise again. Dinner time. 
bath time, shower and teeth time, uh, family TV, YouTube, watching some great um, uplifting wonderful uh, family things together, toilet, bedtime and pray. So in my next parenting um, moment with you I've actually got some ways to prepare children for their sleep. Actually that's the next time after that. Anyway, we uh, just bless you and I thank God for you and I hope these little thoughts have helped you on your journey of parenting. Bless you in the name of Jesus and thank you for watching. Um, until next time, bye for now.